Welcome to the Glenn Mercer Show, where we talk all things vegan. If you're not already vegan, no worries, we'll get you there. If you are, tune in for health advice, information on climate change, and all the damage done by our most destructive industry, animal agriculture. We'll also talk cooking, theater, film, and culture. My two reasons for starting this podcast, to entertain, to inform, and to make people vegan. Oh, that's three. Shit. Welcome to the Glenn Mercer Show. You can find us across all your favorite podcast platforms. You could find us on YouTube. And please remember to like and subscribe. And you could find us at realmeneatplants.com. My guest today is someone I'm excited to get to know, Maxim Siguan. Did I get that last name right? Yeah. Okay, Maxim. Uh, Maxim is originally from Quebec, um, and he now has an enterprise that he's going to tell us about called fitvegancoaching.com. Maxim, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Glenn. I'm really happy to be here. So, so tell us your story. Were you always a fit vegan? No, I was actually quite the opposite. I used to be a really, I used to be a farmer, heavy meat eater. Like we killed our own chicken when I grew up, like we had our own farm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I grew up in the country where we, you know, mm -hmm. we baled hay every year. We cleaned out the chicken coop and we just, we had a hundred, about 140 acres of land um, with, with cows, horses, pig, geese, chickens. We had like 15 cats, a bunch of dogs. Um, and my parents were very much the respectfully, a little redneck family. We had a red pickup truck and, you know, <laughs> we, we lived on the farm. And so, yeah, every year we, we like killed our own chicken for meat. Um, and then we would sell it to the neighbors and kind of have some from our freezer. And so my parents are quite shocked when I went vegan. They're like, we, we don't do that. We don't not eat chicken. Um, they always made fun of vegans for eating little blocks of plastic, which was tofu at the time. Uh -huh. So uh, how, how old were you when you rebelled against the family tradition and uh, why did yeah. you do it? Yeah. So it was maybe about 20, 21 years old. So it was uh, about nine to 10 years ago, almost approaching 10 years now that I've been vegan. Okay. okay. Um, I was a bodybuilder and a power lifter. So I used to, you can't, you could tell now, but I was used to be 240 pounds. You uh, used to be 240 pounds. Yeah. It used to be 240 pounds. How tall are you? I'm six, four. Oh, you're six, four. Okay. Yeah, you can't, I'm sitting down. You can't tell yeah. too much, but I'm, I'm really yeah. tall. Okay. Um, yeah. So six foot four was a bodybuilder, was a power lifter, competed on stage, was able to deadlift 550 pounds, like do some uh -huh. crazy stuff from a physique standpoint. Uh -huh. And then one day I just was exercising with a friend and uh -huh. um, he was, he drove me to the gym. So he's like, Hey, I just need to make a quick pit stop at my friend's apartment. I was like, Cool. Uh -huh. You gave me a ride. Let me just hop on with you. We get to the friend's apartment and there's a runway, like a modeling runway in the apartment. I was like, what kind of friend do you have here? <laughs> I was like, I don't have friends like that. He's like, well, it's my modeling agent. I'm just here to get some comm cards, which are like your business cards for, for modeling. And then she looked at me and mind you, I'm 240 pounds. I'm wearing like an XL. I'm, I'm stocked up. And she's like, I see something under those big chubby cheeks. He's like, uh -oh, try what did some she weights. see? I right? just like, we saw a jawline under it. She's like, try uh -huh. losing some weight and we'll see if we can do a photo shoot and get you some jobs. And I was like, you know what I did? I, I played basketball throughout college. I did a lot of sports, martial arts, all that fun stuff growing up. I did bodybuilding. I did powerlifting. I competed. I was like, let me just try this new venture in terms of sports and, and physique. So I was preparing to cut for a uh, fitness modeling competition. And I wasn't vegan at the time still. And so I kind of leaned out got a six pack, did my photo shoot and then booked some jobs and made some money. And I was like, I mean, I think I made $200 my first gig. I was like, I made $200 in two hours. I was working at Subway at the time at like 12 uh -huh. bucks an hour. I was like, this is great. I can be fit. People take photos of me and I don't have to make sandwiches. This is awesome. But how did you get fit? Uh, just through training and nutrition. I was a, I was a bodybuilding, right? A bodybuilder. So mm -hmm. when I used to prep for shows, same thing. It was very much the chicken, rice, broccoli meals. I was eating a dozen eggs for breakfast. Uh, and then three wow. chicken breasts every two to three hours for five meals a day. So about 15 chicken All breasts right. a day. So you were supporting the family business as you got in shape. Yeah, pretty pretty much. And Costco. Those were the okay. two people that I was supporting very much. Okay. 
Um, and then when I did my first gig, I, I, my photo shoot made some money and I went back to the agent. I was like, Hey, I want more of this. He's like, okay, well, if you do, you have to get a lot skinnier. Um, you're too muscular to fit in the clothes. And because you're six foot four, you're, um, you're a fashion runway material. So to walk fashion shows, but you need to fit into like a small medium, like a medium shirt. I was like, I'm an extra large. <laughs> you want me to go down to a small medium? And so I was like, you know what? I've tried everything else. Let me just get into it. So I got home, went on Google. What diet's going to allow me to get the skinny as possible? Vegan showed up. Like vegans are uh -huh. skinny and weak. I was like, I don't care if I'm weak. I just need to get skinny so I can fit in those darn clothes. <laughs> this, disclaimer, you can be strong and be vegan. I've done a lot of things as a vegan since then. But ultimately turned vegan the next day. Like all the meat that I was telling you that I was consuming, the next day I switched for breakfast was a bowl of frozen blueberries, dates, and bananas. And then I just ate vegan from there. I didn't know how to feel myself properly. That was like nine, 10 years ago. It wasn't a cool thing. There wasn't a lot of options. So by default, I was whole food plant-based because there was no other option. Um, I ate a lot of fruits and vegetables and I managed to drop 80 pounds in my first year. Wow. Um, now, when your family gave you some flack for going vegan, your answer was, hey, there's big money in being vegan, right? So you were doing it. <laughs> for, I've heard people do it for the animals. People do it for the environment, the climate. People do it for their health. You were doing it for the modeling bucks. Yeah, just so Initially. I can get skinny. Yeah, exactly. It was purely um, from an appearance standpoint. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I started eating this way, I was like, I need to do research because I don't know what to eat. Right. Fruits right. and veggies I was clear on, but grains and lentils and beans. I didn't I didn't have any right. idea in terms of food. Now, were you worried at all at the time that you were doing something that maybe wasn't healthy? You were just doing it to lose weight. Did you, did, uh, you, did you have any protein fears or anything like that? Or had you read enough that you knew not to worry? Uh, it was only for two months because two months into it, I saw forks over knife. Uh -huh. And that kind of just like clarified everything for me. And I was like, I don't have to worry about anything. The first two months, I'm very much a disciplined person when I set a goal. So I didn't even think about health. I was like, I just need to get skinny, lose muscle uh -huh. mass and lose fat. Uh -huh. And and then within two months, saw the documentary and I was like, oh, I don't have to worry about anything. Like, And, uh -huh. and at the time, my grandfather got diagnosed with cancer and ended up passing away within a, a few weeks of being diagnosed. And I saw how he was living and how he was eating. And I just watched Forks Over Knife and I was like, oh my God, this connection happened in my brain. And then uh -huh. I became a really hardcore activist for maybe a year to try to save everyone around me. Uh, uh -huh. So that was like my my early transition into veganism. And how did that work? How many did you save? Uh, not a lot in my first year uh, because I realized that going down that road is not the best. If someone comes to you and tells you that your whole life has been a lie, people are not really receptive to changing. Uh -huh. And so that kind of is what changed my model to be able to influence people, which is just let me just lead by example. And as I got uh -huh. fitter and I started thriving some more, people came to me with questions and they were more receptive to the information I was giving them. Okay. So you lost the weight, you started getting yeah. more modeling work. Uh, yeah, I did. I was able, I worked in New York, I worked in Milan and Italy. Um, I was able to kind of travel around the world a little bit and, and, and work in that industry uh, for maybe three years until I decided uh -huh. to step out because it's a very toxic environment. It's not glamorous like people think it is. Uh, the whole drug scene and making yourself puke and starving is a real thing in that world. And I just didn't want to be a part of it anymore. So when you got out, what was the transition plan? Uh, I just, I was a hippie at that time, if I can put it that way. You know, I, I traveled, I hitchhiked around, I slept in tents, slept on mountains. I just did that for several years. So after I got out of that industry, I was just like, let me just continue to travel for fun and explore the world until eventually I ended up in Vancouver, BC, Canada, where I met uh, my ex-fiance, who was the one that got diagnosed with cancer. And I just like started a whole new chapter of my life at that point. All right. Tell us about that chapter. Yeah. So, you know, we met within three months. She, you know, had a lump on her breast, went to the hospital and we didn't know what it was. You know, sometimes your lymph nodes are just swollen. So you think that it's just that. But then the doctors called us in and like, no, like it's, it's breast cancer. And I believe it was like stage three. Um, and so... I, you know, I loved her and I was like, I'm going to stay by her side while we go through this. And I believe that we'll be able to heal this. Uh, the doctor gave her one year to live. She lived five years extra with a really good quality of life. Um, she was vegetarian ish, you know, fish and eggs and some cheese before I met her. 
And then when she got sick, I was like, Hey, like, I know this is potentially harsh for you, but like go whole food plant-based. Like there's so much studies behind it. I've been feeling awesome. And so she went whole food plant-based and I believe that's what added, you know, four years to her, to her lifespan. Um, and it was one of the hardest things that I've ever had to, to go through and stand by and support. And it taught me a lot about myself, about relationship, about caring for others, about health, about nutrition. And the big part is it showed me how much losing your health is not worth it. Because some people will always say, well, like, I'm busy, I don't have time to work out, or I don't have time to eat healthy food. Or if they're not vegan, I'm like, but I really like bacon, I really like burgers, or I really like pizza. Like, that's great. But once you get sick, you would give absolutely everything that you have, you would go live in a box in the street to have your health back. And, you know, regardless of how much money we had to make to pay for the treatments, regardless of what we had to do, it was just never enough. Like the healing just needed more and more and more and more. And I just didn't want people to have to go through that. So which embarked me into the next chapter of my life. But that's what shaped and, and molded me because I was 22 when she got diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. So from 22 to 27, uh, I was a caregiver full time. And did she do the chemo and radiation? No, she didn't. Um, it wasn't in alignment with her values and um, it's her life. So I, yeah. you know, stand by the side and respect and just to pro provide support as much as I could. But she didn't do any of the conventional treatments. She did a lot of alternative therapy. Um, mm -hmm. So for the people listening, if you live in Canada, chemo and radiation is covered by the government. Uh, but she wanted to heal holistically. Uh, which I discovered is not covered by the government. It's covered by the Bank of Mexim. And so it, it put me in the hole for five years while we tried uh -huh. to fund that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, good for her that she stuck to her values. And I'm sorry that it ended unhappily. Um, Thank you. Well, I, I gotta say, like, she, I've never said this on any podcast, but she's a beast because even the last day when she was in the hospital bed with the tube down her throat because her lung her lungs were collapsing, but like, Hey, there's a chance that we could do some, a round of chemo to try and I, she was like, I'm not doing that. He's like, I didn't make it this long to just give up last minute. She's like, I'm gonna keep fighting till the end. And you know, her heart stopped three times and they brought her back every time. So she was a, a warrior. I'm super proud of her. Yeah. yeah. And, she, and she lived five times longer than they projected. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, and it speaks well of you, too, that you stuck by her side for, for so long. Yeah. Uh, so after that loss of your fiance, what was the next phase of your life? Helping other people not be in that position. That was that was the big one. Um, you know, waking up to screams in the middle of the night because she's her body's hurting, whatever. I was like, man, no, no one should have to go through that. Like it was painful for me. And I was experiencing 0.0001% of what she was experiencing. So I couldn't even imagine what it was like to go through cancer. And so I was like, you know what, if you eat a whole food plant-based diet, which is highly documented that it helps to reduce and reverse some of those chronic illnesses. If you're moderately active, you have a healthy BMI, healthy body weight, you know, you're spend some quality time on prioritizing yourself with your sleep and stress management, all these things, you're greatly and significantly reducing your risk of all those chronic illnesses. And because I have a huge background in fitness, I was like, you know what, like this, this just aligns with me. I need to help people not be in that position through exercise, through whole food, plant-based eating, through helping them take care of themselves, getting them to a healthier weight. And that's kind of when fit vegan coaching started, you know, over three and a half years ago. Okay. So tell us about fit vegan coach coaching. What does it involve? Yeah. So it's, it's a, I built it to be like an all inclusive resort where you just show up and everything is taken care of for you. Because at the end of the day, I know that it's hard to change your nutritional habit. There's a lot of emotions attached to food. We have cravings. We have, we're used to certain patterns and habits when it comes to exercise. We're not potentially not used to exercising or we are, but it's kind of been inconsistent throughout the years. And I believe that it's really frustrating when you try to do something and you don't see any results. But the reason being is because there's no clear game plan to get you there. It's like, if I give you all the parts to buy a car, if there's two people, I give one guy all the parts to, to build a car and then another guy, all the parts to build a car with a map and a blueprint. He's going to build the car a lot faster and I'm more likely to jump in his car than the other guy's car. 
And so when you start to see results faster because you have a clear game plan, people are more motivated and inspired. And then there are internal identity shifts. And then they're like, I'm the healthy person that exercises now. I'm the person that makes the healthy decisions when they're eating at the restaurant. So that's how we built it. Basically, when people come in, you know, they do blood work, they get a consultation with a doctor. Uh, then we build a custom plan in accordance to the results. And then from that plan, we're able to ship the food to their house so that they okay, don't have now, to cook or milk. Let me prep. interrupt you here. You began by calling it a resort, but it's an it's a virtual resort, right? There's no physical yes. location. Yeah, right? it's a virtual resort. Um, just because you know, we're in over 20 different countries now. I wouldn't be able to do that if I was just locked into right, Los Angeles. Right. So, so the, this the is a virtual internet. resort. And when you say people, when people come in and do the blood work. They're doing the blood work wherever they, wherever they live. Yes, and you're consulting yeah. with the on the results. Yeah, exactly. So it's an online consultation with a uh, mm. Dr. Lori Marbus, who's on on our team. Cool. I don't know if you're familiar with her work. Yeah. Um. So you get consultation with her, and then we adjust the nutrition, ship the food, build you a custom plan, and then hold you accountable throughout the whole process to help you lose the weight or improve your body composition, your health to the extent that you want. And then we bring everyone through something called reverse dieting after. So reverse dieting. Yes. Yeah. So it's what, a, it's what a, is it, reverse dieting? Yeah. So it's a new concept for a lot of people. So when you think of it in North America, we don't have a fat loss problem. We have a keeping the weight off problem. Most people actually, the stats are that 95% of people that lost weight will put it back on within six months to a year. So it means if you drop 40 pounds, you're 40 pounds heavier, potentially 95% of the time, one year later. So reverse dieting is a process where we speed up people's metabolism after they're done losing the weight. It's a very not sexy process, right? It's not like you're taking a shake or a pill, you're doing a certain exercise. It's basically where we slowly and methodically re-add food to your daily food intake over the span of four months to give your body a chance to get adjusted to more food without putting on fat. So the analogy that I used to explain is, you ever went camping before? You want to you start a fire? As a kid, yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, you have your little flame, you have a little newspaper, a few pieces of wood, a lighter, you have a little flame. Yeah. That's people's metabolism after they're done doing a fat loss phase. What most people do after a fat loss phase is like, yes, I'm done doing this. Let me just go back to what I was doing. Let me go in and eat more food. That's like throwing a big log on that tiny flame. Flame can't handle it, right? It's going to put it out. So same thing. By the time your body gets used to the food consumption that you increase to so rapidly, your body stored all the fat back. And so how do we make a small flame bigger efficiently? You throw smaller pieces of wood on it over time and eventually it grows, it grows, it grows, it grows, and you have a raging fire. So what that translates to is you're able to eat a ton of food to maintain a 20, 30, 40, 70, 80, 100 pound fat loss. And that greatly reduces your risk of being able to put the weight back on. And our stats are about like 85% of people keep the weight off two to three years after when the stats for North America and 95% of people put it back on within a year. So it's, now, when people are in the weight loss phase, yes. is there any calorie deprivation or is it just that they're eating a whole food, slow fat, plant-based diet and they could eat as much as they want? It's a combination of both. Um, I, I can appreciate the movement of eating as much as you want, as long as it's whole food, plant-based. Um, but we've had a lot of people from that movement come to us that have been trying to lose weight for years because they're not I'm eating whole food, plant-based. I'm eating healthy food. But they're loading up on sweet potatoes and dates and mangoes, which are some of them are really high in calories. And so they're consuming way more energy than what they're expending on a daily basis. So we do a combination of both. We don't get people to track their food, right? They have two options. We can give them a meal plan that they can prep themselves or we can ship food to their house. But everything is whole food plant based because it's high in vitamins, it's high in nutrients, it's high in fiber, it's high in volume. So even at a calorie deficit, you're still consuming a large volume of food. So you don't feel hungry. Like a number one complaint is that people can't finish all the food. I'm like, that's a great problem. You're trying to lose 20 pounds. You can't eat all the food. That's a great problem to have. So yeah, so it's a combination of both. Okay. Now you ship food to your customers who are trying to get fit. So tell us about that. Is it customizable? And what kind of meals are you shipping? Is it three meals a day? How does it work? Yeah, so we have different packages. So we have a partnership with a, um, it's called Whole Harvest. Um, it's a whole food plant-based company that uh, I think the majority of their meal are SOS free. Um, so it's a partnership we have with them. So they have their menu. So we'll build our meal plan and choose the right meals to ship to people's house. And we have two packages where people can 
you know, have one meal included per day, because for some people, lunch is the hardest one to kind of find time for the day. And then when they're at home, they're cooking dinner with their family, and it's a lot easier. And for some of our people that are really busy or that really don't want to cook, we have a lunch and a dinner package that would be included. Okay. Um, and is there any follow-up to make sure that people are eating on plan? Absolutely. So there's a, we have our own app. So there's a communication channel directly one-on-one -on -one with your coach. So you can literally ask questions every single day. We have daily group calls um, that our members can attend and jump on. So we have a doctor of physical therapy leading a group call once a week. We have our holistic nutritionist leading a group call once a week. We have Dr. Lori leading a group call. We have q &A calls. So there's an opportunity every day to get some support. Uh, if they can't make the call, they can watch it as a replay. So it's like a private podcast, basically for our members. There's weekly check-ins um, that are mandatory for our members. And there's one-on-one -on -one calls with the coaches minimum once a month. Okay. So yeah, there's touch points every day, uh, basically. Now, Maxim, for those who are watching on YouTube rather than listening on an audio podcast, um, the, the, the YouTube watchers can see that behind you is a whole host that looks like maybe 20 or 30 colorful belts. And I'm yes. guessing that you got these belts at different bodybuilding competitions, martial arts competitions. Tell us about these belts. Yeah, for sure. So there's probably a few, it's probably like, I only did one bodybuilding competition. It's not something that I want to redo. It was a little bit too much for me. Um, I have, but a you got a, did you get a belt? Uh, yeah, I got a medal for it. Yeah, I got, okay. I got, I got fourth out of fifteen for my first competition, okay, um, which I was pretty, pretty, good. pretty happy about. Mm -hmm. I have some baseball medals in there. I have some Spartan races. I would say the and uh, what else do I have? I'd say the majority of them are triathlon related. Uh, I've done a few half Ironmans and probably like twenty different triathlons and half marathon races. So a lot of them are from the endurance world. A lot of them were accumulated during my vegan days. I would say not, maybe ninety percent of those medals are during my vegan days. Did you say during your vegan days? Yeah. But aren't you still vegan? No, no I am. So from the past nine years, ninety percent of those medals were accumulated. Oh, I see. As, For yeah. You. So. Yeah, what I'm new, trying to say they're, is, they're from the new you, in other words. Exactly. So what I'm trying to say is like as a vegan, I've accumulated more medals than I did when I than when I wasn't right. vegan. Yeah. Okay. Now, are any of them from martial arts? Uh yes. I got this one here. I got this one here. And what, what kind of martial art belts are they? Uh karate. karate. So it's karate. So you're yeah. also a karate practitioner. Uh, I used to. I stopped uh, midway through high school. I was a black belt second degree, which I don't have up here because I couldn't find a rig to kind of put it up, but it's in my closet. <laughs> All right. I have uh, just uh, this one here, which is for holding up my pants. Oh, beautiful. But... Well, it's not doing its job because it's <laughs> you're holding it in your hands. <laughs> What's that? I said it's not doing its job because you're holding it in your hands. <laughs> well, I know, but my pants haven't fallen down. I'm sitting, so we're, okay. we're good. Yeah. <laughs> um so um your family is your family still in the chicken killing business no no we they, they sold the farm maybe oh gosh maybe like eight years ago um my mom is vegan now she really? uh yeah so when i started the coaching business she jumped on she struggled with her weight loss her wait, whole life now wait a minute did you give her a discount because she is your mother She's free in the program. She's free. She, okay. Yeah. She gave me birth. She deserves a free coaching. Okay. So I'm paying our coaches basically to coach her. She lost, uh, she's 58 years old. She lost 54 pounds and has a six pack for the first time in her life and has stayed that way for the past three years. Um, oh. And so she's like, this is the way I'm going to eat and live forever. So working on my dad, he's vegetarian now. Or you know, when okay. we went from a steak, you know, eater, chicken killer, now uh -huh. he's vegetarian, only eating meat when he eats out at the restaurant, which is a few times a month at home and vegan. So okay. he's work, work in progress, but he's getting there. Good. You have any siblings? Yes, I got I got two younger brothers. They, those guys are not on board. One's in the military, so there's definitely not a vegan component for him in there. Uh, and the other one is a photographer. So I, don't, I think he's eating vegetarian for the most part, but definitely not towards the vegan movement yet. Uh-huh. So yeah. when you join the military, I, I guess there isn't a lot of vegan activism in the military, huh? Not from what I heard from him. 
Yeah. Yeah. We got to work on that. Yes. Yeah. I guess that would be in Canada, huh? Yes. Yeah. In Canada. But we got to work on that all over North America. Uh, all right. Let's take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with Maxim. All right, if you've ever wanted to show off your plant-based lifestyle and do it in style, here's your chance. We have some of the most amazing t-shirts, hats, accessories, coffee mugs, and more at shop.realmeneatplants.com. We have statement t-shirts that will bring a smile to everyone's face. I love the I want tofu tonight tea. Plus, we have podcast teas, real women eat plants gear, real kids eat plants, and real people eat plants, just in case men, women, and kids didn't cover it all. Yeah, we love you and love that you want to show off that healthy lifestyle of yours. Again, check out our high-quality gear at shop.realmeneatplants.com and enjoy. Maxim, let me ask you this. Are you a fan of supplements? Is supplements part of your personal routine and part of what you advise to your clientele? Uh, to a certain extent, yes. So obviously, B12 is one of them for our members and in some form of plant-based omega. So there's a uh, sunflower oil. Uh, ahi sunflower oil is a, a good one for omega-3. And then uh, protein powder is very useful when it comes to helping get enough protein to shift your body composition. Um, because the game when you're trying to shift your body composition is lose fat and build muscle. Because if you're just losing weight and you're losing fat and build and losing muscle at the same time, you're just getting skinnier and lighter, right? You're not going to look that great. You're going to have more lean muscle mass on your body. But the thing is, we have to get slowly over time lower in your calories, which becomes trickier to hit that slightly higher amount of protein that you need to accomplish that shift in body composition. So a protein powder comes in handy from time to time because in terms of calorie cost per gram of protein, it's going to be very low compared to a full block of tempeh, for example. Um, so how many supplements do you take personally? Uh, just three. It was a protein powder, the omega-3, and then the vitamin uh, B12. B12. So that's, th that's it for most people, just those three supplements. How about vitamin D? Yeah. So I don't supplement with vitamin D, but some members choose to, again, it depends on their lab results when they come okay. in. Yeah. So do you test for vitamin D? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah we do. And what kind of exercise plan do you, if somebody says, look, I don't want to be a muscle builder. I'm not trying to be a world-class athlete. I yeah. just want to be healthy. I want to lose 20 pounds. Uh, I just uh, don't want to get heart disease. I just want to be in good shape. What kind of exercise plan? How rigorous is it? Um, and and talk about the um, cardio cardio exercises versus the, uh, the weightlifting and so forth. Yeah, of course. So, you know, at a minimum, we like to have everyone on three sessions of strength training sessions per week. Spring training, did you call it? S strength. Oh, strength training. Yeah, strength training, minimum three times a week. Okay. On the, three to four. We play around with people's schedule, right? Obviously, we want it to fit your lifestyle. We don't want it to be a stretch where it doesn't fit into your schedule. But three is the minimum. Anything under three is not enough of a stressor on the muscle to stimulate growth. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why it's important, like the majority of people we work with are between 45 and 80 years old. That's kind of like the range of people that we work with. As you get older, lean muscle mass decreases, bone density decreases. And one of the best things you can do to increase your bone, bone density and lean muscle mass is strength training, is bone bearing mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. And so at minimum three times a week, it ranges from 30 to 60 minutes, depending on what your goal is, depending on your age, depending on your current level of fitness, depending on what the goal is, mm -hmm. uh, but ranging 30 to 60 minutes, three to four times a week as a base for the strength training, because without that, the body's not going to change. Lean muscle mass is not going to be built and um, bone density is not going to increase. And then some cardiovascular exercise, we use it as a tool to create deficit as we move along. But we always keep it as a part of the plan because, you know, it's one thing to have a, a lean body uh, and and some lean muscle mass. But if your heart gives out, you still die. So it's very important to train <laughs> to train the heart. It's more than just doing cardio and trying to lose fat. It's about it's about heart health. So, so what what do you do to train to have a healthy heart? 
Uh, it could range from different things. Again, very much depending on who the person that, that we're coaching, younger, older, current health situation, if they have heart issues or whatever. But, you know, a good place is just pick an activity that you enjoy doing and do that for, you know, 30 to 90 minutes a week to get started. So if you love playing pickleball, play pickleball. If you love swimming, swim. If you love biking, bike. If you love running, run. Don't pick something that you don't enjoy because you won't want to do it. But this is a good place to start. 30 to 90 minutes a week of an activity that you genuinely enjoy that gets your heart rate up a little bit. Okay. Um, and then for the the uh, strength component, is things like push-ups good enough or does it have to be weightlifting? Um no, push-up is a great place to start. Again, it depends on your level of fitness. For some people, I got I got members in 55 that push-ups are too easy for them. I'm like, okay, well, let's just turn you around and put a bar in your hand so you can have a little bit more resistance than because your muscles are used to it. So any form of resistance. So whether it's with a weight, body weight, resistance band, or reusable grocery bags with cans of beans, whatever it may be, as long as it offers enough resistance to stimulate some you know, some stressor on the muscle, that's all we need. The body only knows gravity. It doesn't care what you're holding in your hand. Uh -huh. I got members squatting their kids on their back for the exercise because they're working out at home. So the body just knows gravity. Wow. It's easier to just buy weights, isn't it? It, it is. They, they move less when you're squatting, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, you're also an entrepreneur, not just with your fit vegan coaching, but you get involved in other businesses as well. Is that what I understand? Yeah, we have six of them right now. So, so to, to tell us about those six businesses, what do, are you an investor in these businesses? Or are you involved in the running of them? Uh, I built all of them and I have several people running them. Okay. So you know, when I mentioned my fiance, when she, when she passed away from cancer, I didn't want anyone to have to go through that. And I needed to make that tangible for myself. So I gave myself the mission of helping 10,000 people get lean, thrive, and disease-proof their bodies on plants by 2033 and a million by 2050. And so to me, you know, we're across all the companies, probably over a thousand transformation at this point in three and a half years. But I just realized that if I personally try to impact 10,000 people by myself, it's going to be really hard. And it's not I'm working harder versus smarter, right? It's not about me. It's about the amount of people that we can impact and the lives that we can change. So I realized what are my best skills? I'm really good at building systems, really good at scaling companies. So I was like, I have a good system for fit vegan coaching. Let me go to other vegan fitness coaches that potentially are just pure coaches, but that are, you know, don't have a business background <laughs> to be able right. to have the income and the impact that they want to have. And let me build their system and help them scale it up so they can have more impact. And so on my side, my goal is to have 15 to 20 companies under our umbrella, because if I got 10 companies impacting a thousand lives, that's 10,000 right there. And the beauty of that model is I have one of our business partner, Brian, who's really big and muscular and he's vegan. So mm -hmm. if someone wants to be vegan and wants to be big and muscular, they look at me, they're like, you look like a twig. I don't want to work with you. But they look at him, they're like, I want to look like him. I'm like, great, go work with him, right? Because I own a piece of the business. We're able to have some impact through that. So that's how I'm fulfilling the mission. The bigger mission ultimately is through these, these other companies with mine included. So are the other companies um, findable at the same uh, fit? Uh, what is it? Fitvegancoaching.com? Or, or uh, they have their own websites. So they they all have their their own websites for 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 them. Yeah. Okay. And do do all the so they're all run by coaches, right? They're, yes. They're, yeah. And do all you six coaches kind of uh, stay in touch and and um, and collaborate and build your businesses together? Yes. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we have our little Slack channel with everyone in there. Obviously, they get consultation calls with me as a part of the package to help them scale the company. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of cross collaboration happening because at the end of the day, people are going to go with whoever they connect the most with. Like some people listening to this will resonate to the mission that I have and kind of our structure and they'll want to work with me. And some people will listen to me and be like, screw that guy. I don't want to work with him. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Right. Who you can't would do that? Everyone. <laughs> You'd be What's surprised. Wrong with those people? <laughs> You'd be surprised. But you know, at the end of the day, people will go with whoever they connect with the most. And I understand that. that's part of the game. Uh-huh. Um, 
do you ever um, promote all six businesses together so that people could sort of pick and choose who they want to resonate with? We So we have a separate page called Impact Entrepreneur. Um, where we do that with all the members. Okay. So all the companies that are under on that umbrella are on that page. And that is impact entrepreneur. So I, I'm blending the word impact and entrepreneur together. Um, because the other URL I wanted was like fifty thousand dollars. I was like, I'm not paying for that. <laughs> Let me just find something else. So you got <laughs> stuck with impact entrepreneur. Dot com. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's like a word that would show up in a spelling bee. Yeah. Impact yeah, pretty much. Entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, do you enjoy being an entrepreneur? Is that? Absolutely. Uh, I, I love it. It's a, uh, it's fun because it's driven by the mission. If it was just to make money, uh, it would suck. I would have stopped a long time ago because it's really, really hard. It's one of the, as much as being a caregiver was hard, I believe building several businesses is as challenging as being a caregiver. Mm -hmm. um, and it forces you to grow tremendously <laughs> if you have the willingness to. And it's one of the hardest things I've done. And so if it wasn't for the mission, I wouldn't be doing it because it's way too hard to do just because. Right. Now, before we started the 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 uh, recording today, you told me that before you were a vegan, you used to have like a dozen eggs for breakfast when you were a bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah. I would have 10 egg whites, two full eggs, one cup of oatmeal, two tablespoons of peanut butter and half a scoop of frozen blueberries. I had that breakfast every day for three and a half years while wow. I was training. Yeah. Now, what do you have for breakfast now? Uh, smoothie for the most part. I like to keep it light in the morning. So I'll just make like a massive green antioxidant rich protein smoothie in the morning. Okay. And uh, what... Take us through a typical day. What's what's lunch and dinner on a typical day? Yeah. So for lunch, probably be like a stir fry or a Buddha bowl. Um, just a ton of grain, ton of vegetables and protein sources in there. And then for dinner, it'll probably be a stir fry or Buddha bowl. I'm a very simple man when it comes to cooking. <laughs> and when you say um, stir fry, that's an oil-free stir fry, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So oil-free stir fry. I'm really low on my calories right now because I'm doing a cut. Um, so I'm you know, being cautious with when you say doing a cut, what does that mean? A fat loss phase. Oh, yeah. So I'm doing a fat loss phase. I did a, a muscle building phase for a year. I went up to 205 pounds. Um, mm -hmm. And now I'm going down to 190. And I'm at 197 right now, just trying to get a little bit more ab definition. So I can do some upcoming photo shoots. Oh, you're still doing some model. Uh, no, but for the company. Oh, for the company. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm not getting back into that world. It's uh, there's not enough money for the stress and the headache that they give you. So it's just not <laughs> worth it at this point in my life. Yeah, okay. too busy for that. But you know how to lose the weight for the photo shoots from from the old days, huh? Oh, I've I've probably done over 15 transformations in my life. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm very familiar with the whole process. I I actually enjoy cutting a lot more than I like putting on muscle. Uh, to me, that's because I'm, I'm so used to it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really good at dealing with hunger. I'm really good at dealing with harder workouts. I'm a lot better at that than trying to eat a ton of food and trying to put on muscle. Uh -huh. um, and when, when you do try to put on muscle, how do you eat differently? You eat more protein? I eat more calories. More a calories. lot more calories. So we're talking 3,500 to 4,000 calories per day, which with the schedule that I have is not, is really hard because that's four meals of a thousand calories in a day. So it's not just that they're high in calories. It takes a long time to eat that much food and, <laughs> you know, in a sitting. So it's, it takes me so long to eat per day that I, I just told myself that I'm not doing another pure muscle building phase for at least a decade. Like it's mm -hmm. such a, if you know, I, I used to be 240 pounds, like I mentioned earlier, like I've had my biceps were 18 inches. I used to be really big and really strong. Uh, didn't change how I felt about myself. And I got really skinny and had a six pack. Didn't change how I felt about myself. So I feel good, very confident in who I am, whether my biceps are bigger or smaller, I can care less. I know that I have a big brain. That's all I care about. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to do another muscle building phase in the future. Well, speak for yourself because a lot of people tune into my podcast because of my biceps. Oh, you know? beautiful. 
And I, I like to show them off, but I don't want to make you feel bad. So I won't do it right now. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> so tell us about your podcast. You have a podcast too. What kind of guests do you like to have on? And what's the, what's the goal of your podcast? Yeah. So it's called the Fit Vegan Podcast. Um, and the whole point is education and providing free value for people listening that wants to either transition to eating plant-based or just simply eat more plant-based or that want to optimize their nutrition. We spend a lot of time on mindset and psychology um, within the within the podcast simply because that's what makes a difference when it comes to wanting to improve yourself, right? Like the, building a training plan and a custom meal plan is, is easy for us, right? It's what we do for a living. But if you don't stick to it, nothing's going to happen. All right. I'm always up front. I'm not a magician. I'm a coach. So you, there needs to be some type of compliance somewhere. So we focus a lot on mindset because limiting belief, self-sabotage, things just show up as they're on that journey. So a lot of information about nutrition, about mindset and psychology, about exercise. And I have a ton of amazing guests on there, which I love to have you on the show as well. We can book that in after. Well, um, I'd love but, to do that. Yeah, had the opportunity to chat, you know, with Simon Hill, Dr. Greger, Dr. Clapper, Rip Esselstein, like all those amazing people throughout the years. Yeah. Um, and uh, do you find that the podcast changes you in some way when you when you when you're interviewing these people? My voice gets deeper as soon as we start <laughs> recording. My voice gets deeper. Um, yeah, I, I think I just I don't do a ton of research when I have a guest on because I uh -huh. just want to have genuine curiosity for what they're going right. to say, and then right. I'm, the questions I ask is because I'm genuinely curious. Um, right. And it's you you know you have your show. There's a bit of a selfish component to it because I get to learn from some of the best in their industries, right. and I get to ask my question that right. if I met them in the street, I couldn't chat with them for an hour. But I'm like, right. hey, come on my podcast, and everyone's willing to do it. <laughs> so. <laughs> you get to get amazing knowledge from, from other people and you build, you know, friendships and long lasting connections out of them. Yeah. Well, it's true. I wouldn't have met you if I didn't have this podcast and I'm yeah. glad to meet you. Yeah. Same here. Um, how many minutes or hours of the day do you, do you spend working out? We're up probably like 40 to 45 minutes. And so um, nothing extraordinary. No. And that's, four strength training sessions a week of like 40 to 45 minutes and cardio right now is a little bit higher because we're in a fat loss phase. So I do about 120 minutes per week. So that's two sessions of one hour. I'll just go for a bike, right? Uh -huh. I have beautiful trails around here. I'll just go for a bike. I'll go for a run, go for a swim, pick something fun. I'll go play basketball. Um, but right now it's at about two hours a week of cardio with four strength training sessions, about 40 to 45 minutes. Uh -huh. And you were a, a basketball player, were you not in in, yes. in uh, high school or college or what? I played all through high school, got recruited for college basketball, played a few years over there. I'm six foot four. They had to recruit yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. You, you know what I think is wrong with basketball? What? The, the, the basket is what, 10 feet high? Yes. Yeah. No, they should move it to 11 feet because you got these guys <laughs> like shooting down. They're dunking. I know. It's like me throwing something in a garbage can. That doesn't take talent to shoot downward. Yeah. They, well, those, they should those move it to 11 feet. Has nobody yeah. suggested that before? Those guys are freaks of nature to be able to. They're all really tall and really athletic. Um, so, yeah, definitely. If, even if it was 11 foot, they would still be throwing it down. <laughs> then 12. Move it to 12. You got these yeah. seven foot tall guys barely jumping up and then pushing the shoving the ball down i don't respect that they they got to move the basket to 12 feet yeah that would well, be an I, interesting game the 7 foot guys would have to shoot you know yeah it, and that but you're talking close to the net so if you talk about all the other people that are shooting the ball they train yeah. their whole life on 10 foot if you had a foot or two foot to that their yeah. whole mechanic is off so i, I know that would be fun to universe. watch they would just keep <laughs> missing you know, you yeah. would have a like an NBA finalist, you know, championship game. And the score would be 12 to nine. You know, that, that yeah. would be fun. Just raise the damn basket. Any chance yeah. I'm going to win this argument? Uh, well, I'm happy it's 10 foot because I can dunk it. But if it was uh, 11, I couldn't. So I'm happy. I it's know. 10 foot. <laughs> I don't want it to be so easy for you. 
raise oh, it's not. It's the, really let's, hard. Let's, <laughs> I want to make this a cause. Raise the damn basket.com. Just go to raise the damn basket.com, make a contribution. No, I, there is no such website, but that's yeah. what I think would be a good idea. Raise the basket in basketball would be a better sport. I also think maybe the tennis court could be enlarged just a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's, while I'm at it. Yeah. Let's just change all the rules. <laughs> yeah. Change the rules. Make these sports a little more fun. Um, were you a tennis player at all? Uh, no. No, I never really played tennis. It was very much martial arts, basketball, and then it was all endurance events from there. So... With, with with karate, what's a what's a contest like? You're you're, you're put up against somebody else, and, yeah. and what do you have to do to each other? Uh, it's fighting, but you have pads. So I was in primary school to early high school when I did martial arts. I was very young, so obviously it was very different when you do it as an adult. Um, mm -hmm. But it was fighting. You had your helmet, your gloves, your 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 foot pads. And then if you kicked in the ribs or the chest or whatever, you had certain points. And then that's how they would count your points. Okay. So boxing, you have to knock the guy out or win on points. Yeah. But I was uh, wrestling. I you got to pin the guy. Knock anyone out. <laughs> right. Wrestling, you got to pin the guy or I guess win on points. Karate yeah. is all points, huh? Uh, well, that's what it was for me when I was doing it. So it's kind of it's subjective, different. right? Yeah, well, it's if you have the ability to block or not get hit in certain areas or the ability to strike in a certain area, yeah. I mean, could you have a karate match where one guy wins and the loser feels that he won, but, you know, the judge was unfair, the ref was unfair? That'd be, that'd be pretty harsh. Um, I guess it's, there's always like that little bias because if the if you hit someone in a certain angle, but the ref is on the other side and he doesn't see that hit, that's like uh -huh. boxing, right? You, sometimes uh -huh. you miss some stuff. Okay. Um, is it too late for me to get into competitive karate? Please say yes. <laughs> no, it's never too late. How, uh, if you're asking, how old are you, Glenn? I'm in my 60s now. I'm 67. You're 60. You're fine. We got members in their 70s doing animal walks, deadlifting, squatting, running. You, yeah. I, so I, I could still get into karate? Yeah, you can always get into karate. I don't know oh, if you can go damn. to the Olympics, but you can you can definitely get into karate and, and compete. But I don't have to, right? I don't no, have you don't to. have to. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, when it, my image of karate is always those guys like chopping bricks with their hands. Yeah. Never tried that. So yeah, I don't. can't. I, don't, yeah, no. I don't think that skill is useful. I need my hands to type. I can't break anything in them. Okay. Well, Maxim, it's been a delight having you as a guest. Um, you can all, all you listeners out there, you could go to um, fitvegancoaching.com and find Maxim there. And the goal is to get a million people fit by the year 20. 50 is that right yeah yeah a million people that have access to our resources to help transform their body but most importantly reduce the risk of chronic illnesses all right well my goal is to get to 2 million subscribers so please subscribe and uh, please check out fit vegan coaching thank you maxim i've enjoyed talking to you same here thank you very much for having me i appreciate it this has been the Glenn Mercer Show, where everyone listening turns vegan, regains their health, and annoys their friends and relatives. Find us on YouTube at the Glenn Mercer Show and across all your major podcast platforms. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>